Hello everyone, in this video I'll be ranking the Cleric subclasses in Baldur's Gate 3 on a tier list. So, the Cleric itself is an S tier class, it's one of the best, and you should always have a Cleric on your team, but some of these subclasses are much better than others, which I'll be exploring in this video. So, we're going to be starting off with the Life Domain Cleric, which is like your ideal idea of a Cleric, I guess. So, this is all about healing, and personally, I think that this is a bit of a noob track, because... Well, healing's good, don't get me wrong. Healing in Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't really turn the action economy in your favor. This is a game that favors it whenever you're attacking and removing targets that can attack your targets, because a good offense makes a better defense in this type of game. So, if you look at who's moving next, it's honestly better to sometimes attack the next character to get yourself another move to attack again, because the less hits you take, the less you'll need to heal. That is a really big moment in Baldur's Gate 3 when I realized that, uh, because I played my first playthrough with a Life Cleric, and I ended up changing it to Light at the end, and I way, way, way preferred it, because the Cleric is actually pretty strong offensively. It does get heals, but there's some pretty good heals that you get that are just bonus actions. And also, this game, you have a lot of resting. You can short rest all the time, you can long rest pretty much whenever you want, so it makes healing less of an attractive option in Baldur's Gate 3. I still do think, though, that the Life Domain Cleric is pretty good. It gets an extra bonus at level 2 and level 6. At level 2, it'll give yourself an extra 2 plus a spell's level to healing to all spells that you heal your team with. And then at level 6, it'll also apply to you. So, you can heal yourself, heal the team. The bonus action heals uh, can actually be pretty good, especially if you can heal it to the entire team. And where this really shines is you can get gloves that will apply Blade Ward to your team. And then you'll also get some uh, a ring that can apply Bless to your team. So... If you got that all that together, you can actually keep Blade Ward, Bless, and heal your team all up. So, I'm still going to say that the Life Cleric is probably A tier. I, I called it a noob trap. It's not a bad class. Like, healing is never a bad thing. Um, especially if you're not playing on, like, a hard difficulty. This this can carry you to the end game. You can play with four Life Clerics if you wanted to and beat the game. But the most... So, you get spells at levels 3, 5, 7, and 9. And all of their spells are going to be healing related. It's kind of a no-brainer, no obviously, that they get healing spells. But they're going to be the domain spells that you don't have to prepare. I'm going to put in the A tier because it is a great class. But just not as good as some of the others on this list. And I think if it... <laughs> I feel like it's a noob trap in a sense. Because, yeah, people end up healing a lot more when they use it. But... Next, we got the Knowledge Cleric. Now, this one, I don't know how I feel about it. So, uh, I try to play it and try to make it useful. It gets an interesting use at level 6, which is basically Detect Thoughts, but it uses your channel Divinity instead. Uh, so, it has that usefulness. You can choose a, a stat and become proficient in the proficiencies within that stat. Uh, so, like, Strength Proficiency will give you the ability to resist being shoved. It'll give you Athletics, Acrobatics, etc. Knowledge Clerics, I feel like they're okay. You're almost just better off playing as, like, a bard. Honestly, I think a bard would make better use. Or bard rogue, even, if you wanted that. No, it's not a terrible class. I am just going to put it in the B tier, though. Because it just doesn't offer anything truly unique. And uh, the uh, the spells that you get at level 3, 5, 7, and 9 are not that great for the Knowledge Cleric. So, I'll put them in the B tier. Next, we have the Tempest, which... I think it's probably the best in the game. Uh, there's some really great multi-classes with the Tempest Cleric. You can do one level Tempest Cleric and 11 Storm Sorcerer. And that'll give you heavy armor. It'll give you a reaction lightning attack. You can even go with two levels because the second level of Tempest gives you something extremely broken. You can use your channel Divinity to deal maximum amount of lightning or, or thunder. But lightning damage. Where this gets really huge is when you're casting spells that do a ton of damage like Chain Lightning. Now, typically, if you take two levels of Tempest Cleric and, let's say, ten levels of Storm Sorcerer, you're not going to be able to get that. But, there is a little bit of a trick. You can take two levels of Tempest to get that Channel Divinity. You can take uh, nine levels of Sor Storm Sorcerer to get your spell casting, your meta magics, and then take one level of the Wizard and make sure you have, like, the Intelligence Circlet or a bit of Intelligence Stats, because then you can cast Chain Lightning by scribing it from a scroll... It'll use intelligence, but it deals maximum of 80 damage, and that can be doubled to 160 with Create Water, which you get as a cleric. So you can turn one, cast Create Water, and uh, then on your meta magic, you can use the Quicken spell, Chain Lightning, and cast Chain Lightning, and use your Channel Divinity to make it from 80 damage, or make it from whatever damage rolls, to 160 damage guaranteed. Extremely broken. Extremely broken. Also... 
It gets a reaction at level 1 that does a 2d8 of lightning or thunder damage. Uh, and it can also push back people when you deal lightning damage. This is an extremely fun class. I, I promise that if you try out the Tempest Cleric and you've never used it before, you'll probably fall in love because there's just something satisfying about everything that it does. Um, the pushback on lightning damage is cool. You also get Call Lightning, which is a good source of mid-game damage. It does use a concentration because you can continually call it down without using a spell uh, slot. So it's great consistent damage. Good burst damage, and there's a ton of builds that I, I have on my channel if you want to check them out regarding the Tempest Cleric, because it's just extremely powerful. Next, we got the Light Domain Cleric, and this is another S tier. Now, if I had to pit these two off against each other, I would probably say the Tempest is a little bit better, just due to how freak, how easy it is to set up Create Water to double your damage. The Light Domain actually focuses more on like fire damage. But what's cool is if there's a target that has fire resistance, you can use the arsonist oil, and that will make them uh, vulnerable to the fire damage, which will allow you to deal double damage, which is, which is awesome. You get the staples of a fire caster. You get your, your fireball. They actually get a really cool reaction at level 2. So uh, what it does is it can blind the target. Actually, it's level 1 you get the reaction, and level 6 you get it to apply to the rest of your team. Uh, so what it does is whenever you get attacked, you can apply disadvantage to that attack roll. Now, disadvantage is one of the best things you can put on an enemy's attack roll to save your team. When you have disadvantage, they roll two die, they take the lower result. So, disadvantage on attack roll is probably one of the best things you can apply. If they have advantage on their attack roll and you give them disadvantage, it removes the advantage and it just makes a normal attack roll, so that's really nice. But uh, this only gets medium armor, whereas like Tempest and Life Domain, they get heavy armor. So, some people may not love that because medium armor... I think medium armor is pretty good, uh, personally, because there's things like the armor of agility, which can add 17 armor class plus your de dexterity modifier. So if you lean heavy in towards the decks with this, you can actually make it pretty strong. And all the spells that you get from the light domain cleric are awesome. Like You get a ton of fire damage. Um, you get destructive wrath, which is a great spell. And yeah, it's just an extremely powerful class in general. So I have to put that up in the A tier. The Tempest also gets Destructive Wrath. This is a Cleric Exclusive spell at level 9. Extremely powerful. Next we have the Nature Domain. Now, people say this is similar to a Druid, and they're not wrong. It's kind of similar. The only thing is, you don't get Wild Shape, which is the best thing that a Druid gets. And Druids get Amazing Crowd Control, which you get their sloppy seconds, I guess. You get the Druid Cantrips. Uh, you get a Ritual version of Speak of Animals that um, you can cast at any time. It's always equipped, so... There's some nice things about it, but again, if you're going to go with a nature domain cleric, it's almost better to just play as a druid and multi-class like one level of like a tempest cleric just to get the heavy armor, if that's what you're looking for. Um, nature domain does get heavy armor too, but it just doesn't feel like it's a, it's, it doesn't have enough for it, going for it. It gets the, the spells like sleet storm and plant growth, so it does get crowd control, but what makes the druid so good is they get the ability to cat at level uh, at level seven they get the ability to summon a wood woad which can apply spike growth for you and you don't even have to worry about it so I feel like the druid is just better than this so the nature domain is not the worst class ever I'm not I can't put it low uh, somewhere's around here C tier B tier let me know in the comments what you think because the d nature domain I tried it out I just couldn't find it that was fun like at level two. You you get an interesting thing where you can charm animals and plants. But think of it. How many times do you fight a plant in this game? It's not common. <laughs> Especially in Act 3. It's not common at all. So, yeah. I'm going to put that in the B tier. Maybe uh, I'll put it in the C tier. Knowledge Domain at least has the ability to give you proficiencies in certain stats, which isn't useful outside of combat. But the Nature Domain just is like a... It's almost like a worse Druid. And I think that the Druid's the most underrated class in this game. So, Yeah. Next we have Trickery Domain, and this is like a rogue wannabe cleric. It's not terrible, and this is what Shadowheart is originally spec'd out as. They have the Invoke Duplicity at level 2, which is their uh, special little skill. They get good stealth benefits, which is nice, but you don't sneak attack as a cleric. I just feel like the Trickery Domain is almost like not that useful. You can give your teammates advantage on their attack rolls, which is kind of nice with the Invoke Duplicity, but... I think that the trickery domain is probably around a B tier. I, I, it's just the adding in the rogue to this class can be pretty good, but I don't know. It's just missing something to make it an actual effective class, and the way that it translates from D and D to BG three doesn't work out 
amazingly. So, yeah, B tier. Finally, we have the War Domains kind of cut off there. I think the War Domain is fantastic. So, at level 1, this is actually one of the best single level dips in the entire game. When you take a single level of War Cleric, you get a bonus action attack that you can use three times per long rest. That is awesome. It gives you what's called the War Priest Charges, which... You can only get five of them if you go all the way in on the War Domain, but you get three to start off with, so that's pretty generous. This is a bonus action attack. So let's say you're a fighter, level 11. You got three attacks. You go stab, 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 and then bonus action, stab again. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, it also gets heavy armor. It gets a uh, Its channel divinity gives you the ability to add plus 10 to attack rolls to yourself, and then at level 6, you can apply it to others on your team, and that will trigger as a reaction. Again, similar to the Lake Domain, that reaction doesn't actually use up your reaction, but um, I think it's an S tier, because giving a plus 10 to attack rolls on your team is really good. It only applies whenever they miss. You get heavy armor, and it's probably the best single level dip in the entire game. So, yeah, Tempest, Light, and Ward domains are all extremely useful. I would say that a Tempest is by far the best. Light is not far off, though. The Light Cleric is actually really good, too. And the Life Domain, it, it could be S tier, but I, I would say it's an A tier, just because healing is not as effective as just straight up nuking your opponents. So, there it is. That's my tier list of the subclasses of the Cleric in Baldur's Gate 3. Let me know your thoughts. If you found this video fun or useful, please hit the subscribe button below. And I'll see you all in the next video.